So sometimes people will ask, why, let's say I give a profound meditation on the nature of self and people are really rested in the nature of self. And that's fantastic, it's great. They're, they feel this peace, they're starting to sort of move towards the edge of the mind, the mind begins to be transparent and there's this sort of oceanic sense, oceanic sense of peace that begins to infiltrate their experience. So it's anything along the lines of the resting practice, the practice of abiding as the self and sort of ignoring the thoughts that come and go, which has a distinct flavor to it from doing the work in the way of investigation, empowerment, actualization, clarification of self, right? That feels like it's more active in a way like it engages um, the faculty of mind, a more active version of intelligence is being used. One of the reasons I continue to address that, at least to some extent, depending a little bit on the theme and the context of the setting or the session, is because I understand that in a lot of cases, the resting as source can and wants to authentically be empowered and accelerated which generally is aided greatly. The pursuit of becoming the creator is created aidly also in the training of the will, which again requires the clarification of self as a foundational quality or a foundational uh, practice. Are you follow me so far? So what I'm saying is that application of will, like I said earlier, requires that the foundation is clear. If the, if the foundation, if the cement that is laid before a building is built is not according to the blueprint specifications, the blueprint in this case being the truth slash the calling slash what is true for you. Why are you here? What created you? So if the cement that is laid and the pillars that are put in place are not according to specifications and then the rest of the building is built on top of that and the decorations and the expensive furniture and all that, but it's not earthquake proof, then you're in a sense wasting your time and energy building a distorted direction towards source that is going to have hiccups later on, if you will. That's again why we always return to clarification of self which you could simply summarize as self-honesty, self-knowledge and acceptance. Knowledge and acceptance combined is authenticity or self-honesty, clarification of self. That's what I mean by that. So that the foundation is clarified, it's backed up by the blueprint and the distortions are purified. The cement is nice and even and it is laid out according to the dimensions of the blueprint. Now, there's a solid foundation. So now when we apply the will of the adept, the will of the eager student, the will of the yogi, if you will, the will of the true spiritual aspirant who's seeking for the creator to become the creator and throughout their journey of becoming the creator, they're looking to be of service to apply their knowledge of the creator to the rest of its creation. They understand this unity. They understand that teaching is learning, learning is teaching. They understand that actualization is realization and realization is actualization. So why do we not only do the resting? Why do we return again to the more active part, the more investigative flavor? Why do we return to that? It seems like it's just mind. And in a way it is, it's true, it, it is mind. It uses the active faculty of intelligence apply to form, subject, object, experience. It's what is generated by that, right? Whereas if you're resting, the subject, object, edginess starts to soften and soften and soften, and you feel like you become more of the creator, which relatively speaking, it's true, that's what's occurring. You're remembering self and you're resting in self. If you take someone that's not very actualized, who hasn't trained their will, and their concentration and haven't applied themselves willfully with devotion and surrender and sacrifice to a goal in life. 
if they haven't ever learned to do that, the power with which they can rest is diminished compared to the entity who has applied themselves over and over and over again, breaking through barriers of self-nonsense. So uh, application of will, application of will, application of contemplation, application of investigation, application of devotion, application of dedication, application of effort, application, application, application. Someone like that, whenever something comes their way, they can solve that and they can apply that also in the ways of resting, in the way of penetrating the veil. Someone who hasn't done that, who comes from a more lethargic background, who comes from a more quote-unquote lazy background, a more scattered, random background where there's been less application of will, there's been less dedication to a particular direction in life. There's been more sort of fluttering around, letting life kind of take you here and there, not really knowing why you have the friends that you have or why you do the job that you do. If there's no direction of will and someone comes to teaching like restless awareness, I'm not saying it cannot cause a lot of breakthrough and it cannot go profound and take you all the way. I'm not saying that's not possible, but I am saying it's very improbable and it is slowed down significantly from the entity who also trains to apply their will for the proper cause. A cause that's in alignment with the realization of the creator, the awakening of the creator to itself. Compare this to, say the goal is to, for, for a water droplet to merge in the ocean. Water droplet falls in the mountains, it merges with other droplets, it starts to generate a little bit of momentum because of the gravity. And it starts rolling downhill and it becomes a little stream. This is you. A little stream of water, knowing that somehow where you come from is ocean. Knowing that somehow, someday, where, what you'll return to is the full experience of being ocean. Being fully merged and blended and reunified, so to speak, with ocean. That's this sense that we all have, this inevitable gravitational understanding of what draws us in. Every time we rest this awareness, it's almost like the stream stops for a bit and starts to form a little puddle, mimicking the ocean. It's like forms a little lake. If you just stay there and you never return to reapplying the will and concentrating yourself back into penetrative stream, you're not actually reaching closer to the ocean. You're having a subtle mental container. If you don't have that power to penetrate, then the resting is awareness part until applic unless application is completely devoted to that then you can build concentration and application without any of the symbols of goals and challenges and relationships and all that you could just apply it at least hypothetically you could just apply the will to deepen in self and get the same effects get the same acceleration and crystallization amass the same amount of free will in that way, you could do that too. But given the nature of our daily interactions, given the nature of the purposeful timing of our transformation here at this point, at this planet, and how many of us have a blueprint that dictates something wanting to be shared, expressed, and accelerated in others as well, wanting to be learned and realized through interaction with other selves, given that that's the nature of many of you guys' blueprint in this incarnation. You're going to be drawn out into the worldly experience almost inevitably, repeatedly, daily, no? So since that's the case, is that the case for most of you? There's going to be some aspect, some element of applying yourself to a particular direction, a goal, an experience, a relationship, a business, a company, a project, growth, exploring creation. There's going to be some degree of fascination with that, right? And it's going to be very, very unrealistic to say that that's not going to happen anymore and you're going to live the life of a sadhu. Total renunciation where the entire will is now applied to
to meditation only, correct? It's improbable that that's true. No? Given the nature of your blueprint and given the nature of your condition and given the nature of your excitement and orientation, we have to teach ourselves this capacity also in action, in service to others, in engagement with the illusion. That's why I clarify the nature of the illusion so you can understand the nature of the illusion while you are bound to, at least to some degree, interact and engage with that illusion as if it is real or as if it is relevant. Does that make sense? Since that's the case, since that's something that's given, if I were to teach only resting as awareness right now, and maybe I will someday, but then maybe I'll point people back to the earlier work that I've done. But at this point, using this group as an example and the content of the retreat as it's been going back and forth during this event, just want you to understand some of the reasons why that's the case and why that's important and why it's not contradictory but complementary. It's because that lake, that peaceful little undisturbed lake, in order to actually become the ocean, needs to proceed in its journey towards the ocean. It can't just mimic the ocean. You want the individuation to actually dissolve into the ocean. Not just to think about it as a concept of oneness and to be a peaceful individual thinking of oneness. That's different than becoming the one infinite creation and finally the one absolute. The source of the manifestation of awareness, love, light, bliss. So it's like that, we rest, we become ocean-like. We get a taste of what it's like to be the ocean and then we merge and we blend and we gather more energy. We amass more free will, we join up with others. Our stream becomes larger, more powerful. It cuts through greater canyons. And then again, it opens up into a larger body of water and the restfulness and the stability and the peace and being like the creator when we're resting as awareness becomes larger and larger. And the sense, the feeling, if you will, or rather the, for lack of a better word, the flavor of resting as awareness or resting as God begins to be more potent. You can begin to sense the body of water, the amassing of spiritual power, free will is growing, it's increasing in potency, in crystallization, in polarization, in energization. But the more you rest and the more you apply yourself and the more you surrender at the end of a, of a journey of application and challenge and breakthrough and then you go, you remember, oh, I rest, I surrender it all back to God and the body of water grows. And the experience and the juice and the love and the bliss that you tap into, the well that you tap into when you rest after a journey of application of will, the surrender now is that much more potent. It becomes more explosive, more like a big bang of release. And the appreciation of resting increases because of the intensity of the journey having increased, the amassing of free will having increased. So now when you surrender, it's a more powerful surrender. It's a more powerful mimicking of the creator. It's a more powerful blending with the Creator. Because you now have the capacity to take all this free will and accumulate more of the illusion of the individual self, more of your energy, and surrender all of that to the Creator and purify all of that with the Creator. That's why the stream of love and bliss increases the more you practice, the more you rest, and the more you actualize yourself as well. The more you prioritize and apply the will. This is why they're complementary. You'll have moods and modes and periods and faces where the emphasis is on studying self-realization type of work, where you just immerse yourself in that type of retreat, which is what, for example, the Sedona experiment was more focused on, more exclusively. And so you use these types of sessions and videos or courses from the academy and you apply that work you apply yourself to surrender and then there's faces where there's an excitement an inspiration something draws you out into an experiential engaged mode of operating 
and then you apply the will and everything you've learned to live more sourcefully, more truthfully, in a more clarified, purified state, applying yourself, purifying your intentions for the greater good of all, identifying with the greater good of all, which equals the vision. When I say become the vision, it equals become the greater good of all, become the hidden desire in the hearts of all men, all of mankind. Hidden desire combined is the greatest benefit. Again, you can either be of service or catering to people's opinions and preferences, or very different. You can apply yourself to be of service to their greatest, highest good, which they often don't have conscious knowledge of what that is. So you'll be an enigma. Your priority is no longer the personal self. You're becoming a shepherd. You're applying your will for the greater good, the right cause, the right direction. And you're accumulating spiritual mass. You're advancing rapidly towards becoming more of the one infinite creator. And then intermittently, you rest this awareness. You begin to bring forth that simultaneous awareness that you're actually in truth already the ocean in the form of a droplet or in the form of a river or in the form of a body of water or in the form of a raging river. You will recognize the oceanness, the source, while you're applying your will in terms of actualization or crystallization or polarization or energization. So the simultaneity also grows, the stream of peaceful bliss is now also experienced in terms of raging justice or Shiva-like penetration of delusion or devoting yourself completely to a cause. It becomes more and more the same thing, whether in action or seemingly only reflective of the sourceful nature of it. You start to feel different about what you are. You no longer feel so much you're the body, you more feel like you're a stream of liquid gold. The flavor of your very own presence, consciousness, will start to more and more take on a blissful flavor, a blissful depth. The creator will become more present in it. The density of sentience of God, the creator increases in you as you what you're doing every time you choose devotion over slacking anytime you choose to apply yourself whether it is to resting or to crystallizing yourself or making a change making a difference in the illusion every time you're purifying yourself you're shedding all the false alloys out of your system and you're harnessing the power of the creator for the application of will free will is the original energy of the creator you're becoming more identified as the energy of the creator and less as any of the labels or partial manifestations if you're not clarifying the self you can't have free will you're just conditioned and you have preferences based on your conditioning that's not the same as intuitively and directly being in communion with the intelligence of the creator and being able to discern what's been benevolent what's beneficial and what is not and then to apply oneself to that according to one's own free will, one's own assessment, unfazed by feelings and emotions and preferences. Being able to do the right thing in very human terms, you could say it's very similar to just fucking do the right thing, even if you completely feel like not doing it. Don't be a jackass, don't be a jerk, don't be a liar when you know it's not the right thing to do. I don't care if you're uncomfortable about telling the truth. Just tell that person the truth. Very human example of purifying the goal that you are. Maybe situation and you're afraid to tell the truth. But you know it's the right thing to do. Devotion over fear. Application of will. Crystallization. Purification of self. Apply yourself to the just, to the right cause. Now on a less humanized level, it's to be devoted to seek the creator rather than to seek more thoughts, more emotions, more pleasure, less pain, to become less biased, 
to become less emotionally charged about things, to have less of a predefined set of definitions and meanings given to experiences, but to be in that fresh, sourceful space of communion and intelligent resonance with the Creator. And from that free will, where you're not disturbed by your own preferences and your own wants and your own unclarified, distorted foundation, which is not natural, just because you're lazy and that's what you like to choose because it's comfortable and familiar to you doesn't mean it's your natural self. Stop defending your impurities as simply being yourself. You must apply yourself to the purity, to the truth within. Wherever you're at is wherever you're at. And all you need to worry about is the next step for you. I'm just giving you a bigger picture overview of the spiritual evolution as it evolves on a universal level.